Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Not, not since 1976, Colleen, mm -hmm. has Canada failed to advance to the Men's World Curling Championship semifinal. High drama, just like I like it. Oh, you do like the high drama. Even I'm now addicted to high drama. And we couldn't have asked for more drama than during the round robin. I mean, there was just this like roller coaster the whole way. And you know who has to be feeling the worst of it? Tell me. Norway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those last five games and they were looking so strong. And, and then sitting there biting their fingernails in addition to at times Canada, Switzerland. I know. Well, yeah, I mean, you were absolutely right. They were seven and one. Everybody's going, look at these Norwegians. And then they just plummeted. And the swings we saw this week, I mean, look, I would say that five out of the six teams that are into the playoffs, we expected to be there. We'll talk about the Russian Curling Federation tonight. But I think they're all there. How they got there, Colleen? Pretty oh. incredible. <laughs> Everybody took a different route, didn't right. they? Like there were many roads to get here, but the bottom line is they got here. And of course, really big for those first six teams. And we were talking about this the whole time because right. of the Olympic qualifiers on the line, right? right. So right. Sweden and RCF, United States Schuster, I'm there's a person that looked a little uncomfortable in the early going the round robin, finishes at 10 and three. Right. Canada's in there, so Scotland, Switzerland sneaking in. But boy, that was nip and tuck. They needed a little help from their friends in order to make sure. Yeah, there. yeah, they got a little help from their friends. You said it. I mean, the funny thing about the Americans and John Schuster, I think everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but people forget they won the Olympic gold and they sort of just fly under the radar like they did in Pyeongchang, had a slow start and then just went on a tear. Slow yeah. start here on a tear again. You have Sweden, Colleen. I mean, they've won eight straight going into the semifinal, the two-time defending champions. You know, and interesting about Adine, and even you could say De Cruz too, well, perhaps all of the teams, not having enough competition and getting right. used to it again and getting used to communication and getting used to pandemic curling, which means no energy from the crowd. Yeah, which is a tough thing. But we have a special guest. We don't want to keep him waiting. Well, I was going to say we're talking about all these other teams, but everyone wants us to talk about the Canadians. Yes, they clinched that Olympic berth with a big win over Norway last night. It's been a grind. It's been a journey. And now we're going to bring in Team Canada coach Don Bartlett. Uh, so gracious with his time because we're getting ready for a big game tonight, Donnie B. It's great to see you. How are you feeling? I'm nervous again. I've been good the last couple of days, but uh, now that's playoff time, I'm nervous again. Do you have anything left of your fingernails? And what advice do you give them or did you give them during the round robin when, when you know, every now and then there's, it doesn't take a lot to lose at a world championship. The competition's great. But what, what advice did you give them and show me those fingernails? <laughs> Nails are good. Like, oh, good. Excellent. fine. Uh, I just I just told them even before we came here that um, every country when they play Canada doesn't matter who they are you better expect a 90 or a 95 percent game and that's what's happened and these guys like Korea they won won two or three games all week and they curled 95 against this I mean mm -hmm. um, I told them to be ready and there's not much you can do team curls mm -hmm. 95 right it's, you you've, you've got to curl you, you're out your utmost to beat them and uh, it happened a few times but now they know now they know that um, any team you play against playing against Canada you're going to get their A game yeah Don I want to talk about Wednesday the two losses and and the collapse in the last three ends against Sweden what was the conversation after after that game I mean Darren was so vulnerable in that post-game interview what did you guys talk about that that night well, we just talked basically about, like, the, the Rocks had just been done again. So that was mm. the, the second game we played with the Rocks are done again. And up to that point, you get a nice curl, a nice, easy curl coming in. It's very easy to call a line. But when the Rocks are done again, it's all it's straight, 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 and then huge finish, right, from, like, 
just outside of the house in, it really goes sideways. Mm. So you have to anticipate it. And sometimes you anticipate it too much, right? right. And, and sometimes you wait too long. So it's a, it's a very fine line. It's not easy. Everybody thinks, oh, why did they blow the line calls? Mm. Well, it's not, it's not easy. So right. we, we just said, okay. No, and Darren took it for sure on himself. He had a, a so-so game, but we told him, said, we win and lose as a team. We don't win the briar if it's not for Darren. Mm. I guarantee you that. So yeah. we, uh, we said, don't worry about it. It's done. And we'll go forward. I'll end to that. And that is done now. So now let's look forward to Scotland. And uh, none of these games the rest of the way, none of them have been gimmies yet. And they're not going to be gimmies from here on in. But what do you expect from Moat and company? Oh, they, they are a really good hitting team. A really good hitting team. So we have to watch the corner guards being driven in, the center guards being driven in. And basically, but just play our game. Like, you know, all the games we have left are going to be tough. Right. But if we play our game, don't worry about what the other team is going to do. We'll be fine. Um, Don, I'm fascinated about the approach, the psychology around this being a world championship, but also the compounding factor of an Olympic birth. How did you guys wrap your head around that? Because I'm fascinated to hear you say you're more nervous now because you're getting into the playoffs. But from my perspective, you're teetering on that seven and four record, the weight of the Maple Leaf, an Olympic birth. So was it like, let's pass that hoop, that line, and now let's refocus. What was what was the psychology of that, Don? Yeah, that was, we didn't talk about it much, but everybody knew it was there, right? We knew mm -hmm. we had to finish in the top six. And then uh, yesterday, coming into today, we actually made a, a joke about it. That, well, if we, if we don't do it here, We'll win the trials, and then we'll have to go again. We'll have to be the team that qualifies us in, in uh, I think in Istanbul. Right. So uh, they, 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 they handled it really well, and they, they, they laughed about it. And uh, that's one thing we do. We, that's, and one of my major jobs is to keep them loose. Mm. Like Pat Jensen, he does a phenomenal job on, on the rocks and charting everything. There's nobody better, I think. Jules Ochar, our coach, he was the best. Pat is right there, right behind him. He's unbelievable at it. I did it for a few years, and I'm not doing half the job that, that Pat did. But, <laughs> but I, I, my big job is to keep them loose, and yeah. hopefully I can keep, can keep that, continue that. What's the magic of Botcher, too, Don? Because, I mean, he's got that uh, sort of engineer's mind of logic and coolness mixed with the focus. Like, he just knows how to keep compartmentalizing things mm -hmm. and do the job without worrying about outcome. Like, is he not the perfect brain for this he's really good he it's like he's like a chess master right you have mm -hmm. a quick look at the situation okay what are we going to do when again what are they going to do and it's, he's very much like kevin he plays the end backwards what hmm. do we want for the last two or three yeah. shots right so get prepared for that don't worry what's going on now but what do we have for our big end and what do they have to stop us from the big end and he, he's a great mind he's very smart okay we uh we play cards a lot and uh you can tell he's a, a brilliant brilliant mind hmm. yeah no kidding uh how different is uh this week this grind to to the briar and what similarities are there don uh it's very similar um the only difference being every team here can beat you at the mm. briar there's a few teams that you're just never going to lose to right but here because we're canada mm. every team gets up for you and you have to be ready for every game so there's no there's no off games. You got to be ready every game. You got to be prepared to to play your best. And if you don't play your best, you're not going to win. Wow. Yeah, and isn't that a great thing? I mean, we want to see that at the world level where everybody's strong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have uh, a free game to do, or are we keeping you? Yeah, I was going to say, what what are we? An hour and twenty away. What what does that look like from now to first rocks flying, Don? Well, the guys will be getting ready right now. We'll leave at about six, so 20 minutes from now. Um, they're they're in their rooms. Brendan went back for a five minute lay down. He said just to just to relax, and you know they're ready. Um, mm -hmm. The last two games have been close to our best all week. Mm -hmm. So I like the I like the way we're going. We're trending upwards. Well, you know what? It's been amazing to watch, even though it's been white knuckles time sometimes. Um, even that double against, uh, what was it against Norway last night? Yeah. That was out of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, uh, it might have been Brendan's best game of the week, actually. And he, and again today, like um, he's, he's, he's feeling it. 
Um, there's nothing he can't do. That's the great thing about Brendan. He's the smartest skip, I think. And there's no shot he can't make. So it's a good combination. Absolutely. Well, listen, j just before we let you go to that point, I mean, these guys play really good when their backs are against the wall. Some of their best curling. What, do, you, do you have a sense of why that happens? I, I go back, Don, to that run back against Saskatchewan to advance. Uh, when you miss that and we're you're not yeah. here, we're not here. Yeah. What is it about these guys? Uh, they're definitely clutch. I'll tell you that. Um, the longer the, 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 the competition goes, it seems the better we get. Hmm. And even in starting the games, we're a little slow out of the gate. I, I can't understand it. I, I, I try to get them ready, but they're, they're always seem to be a little slow out of the gate. I hate bringing up the whip, but sometimes I'm going to have to, right? <laughs> but, uh, but once the fifth in, and, and we always have the same competition. Okay, the last five, that's, that's, what, that's our, yeah. where we're going to finish it off. Yeah, you want to be stronger down the stretch for sure. Well, how do you like this format, by the way, of the six teams? And now you're pretty much in a quarterfinal. Like you're still climbing the ladder. All of the teams are really right. I don't mind it, but I think there's there's too many games. It's, it's yeah. way too many games. Thirteen game round robin. I mean, I think what, what we should do is add more teams and go to two pools, similar yeah. to what the Briars doing, so that we don't play as many. I mean, a lot of the guys. There's a lot of injuries that that people don't know about a lot of the teams mm. and you, you grind through it. Right. So um, I'd like to see more teams because teams are trying to get in. There's more countries that want to play in this Good and want to bring them in. So yeah. we've got 67 countries, I think now, and let's bring some more here. Yeah. To, to that point, Don, how's uh, Darren's back? Darren's back is really good. Like he had, mm -hmm. um, he had needling, dry needling. Mm -hmm. Ow. Uh, yeah. I got it. You've had it. Uh -huh. I haven't had it. He said it was. It's really, really painful. But after about three or four days of it, like he he says, his back feels better as it has all year. So he's he's feeling really good. There's no issues with him at all. Everybody okay. looks good. That's great. That's okay. great. Okay. Well, we'll be watching. Good luck. Yeah, crack the so whip, John. Crack the whip. Get him going. If I have to. If I have to. No, keep him loose. Keep him loose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice right. to see you, John. Good luck, Thank Don. You Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, yeah everybody's Ooh. cheering for them. That's such a uh, – I love what he said about uh, Brendan. He's such a brilliant skip, strategist, the way he's thinking. Sometimes you can see him when he's thinking, just going – the three or four shots down the way. But I don't want to, I don't think it's that I'm challenging you here, but he is such a chess master and you, he, I do watch him and he's computing and figuring out mm -hmm. and, and doing it like Kevin Martin did. But Colleen, I feel like there have been times this week where they have played a little bit more of a conservative shot when I thought they could have went for it and mm -hmm. maybe went for it when I didn't think they would. Do you think, um, the competition, the moment is influencing a little bit of some of the shots are calling and did it for you? Well, it always depends. What you're always looking for is a little bit of scoreboard management along the way. So it depends on if you see you, maybe you're going to play a conservative game. And if you know it's a fifth end and you really want hammer and six, right. or eight, six right. seven. score dictates everything as well. You're always looking if you're, you're really comfortable, if you're two up uh, with hammer, even in five rock roll, it feels like no lead is safe, right. uh, especially given Adine's four pointer in the last end. But you're 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 always calculating all of that. Um, I haven't noticed a big difference in the strategy when those rocks were papered yeah. and they struggled with as Don Bartlett just talked about the line calls on it. Just getting used to that again. Um, suddenly, I. You, Several members of Team Canada came up light on draws. I mean, that was like, oh, but yeah. that was sort of circumstance of the papered rocks. Okay. And I think that can dictate strategy as well. So right. Right. there's all kinds of things that are going through a skip's head and a curler's head. Wow. Um, something like that happens. But wow. looking at the score, et cetera. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, there was a bit of panic in this country when the team was seven and four. You didn't sense that from the team, but you certainly saw it on Twitter. I did at least, which is nothing new, of course. Um, and now we have this Canada versus Scotland battle, which there is tradition and there is history between these two countries. We're going to bring in Ben Hebert to talk about it in a second. 
But why don't we watch some of that history in one of the most questionable, controversial calls? <laughs> We've got Ben to talk about this after. We'll ask Ben about it, but let's watch uh, Canada, Scotland at the Men's Worlds. There's a history there. Take a look. Interesting. Wow. Well, I, I've been around this game a long time, and you don't see that very often. Yeah, right. Final stone for the Scots. Double bump, bump, bump. And they're going to sit there for shot stone, and they have some backing. In a 6 6 tie, Hart, Hebert, Kennedy, a raise, double. No, no. And Scotland is going to win the World Championship. We are going to question that decision by Kevin Martin to throw that stone away. as if you can i like that theme song ben hey guys see you how are you all right good are you back in the bubble no i'm uh 72 hour isolation at home just uh hanging out with my basement uh watching some masters and dabbling some curling and uh i head into the bubble on sunday awesome awesome Welcome to our bubble yeah. yeah, welcome back to the bubble okay ben before we get into all of what's happened now you watched the shot. <laughs> I didn't know that. Sorry, sorry, guys, guys, you can't, you can't, you can't censor me if you're gonna show that. You know, I mean, hey, hey, it was a long time ago. I remember, I remember, like after, you know, being like, they're gonna show that for the next fifty years. <laughs> I mean, lots of things with that. Um, the ninth end, we won. We should have won the game in nine. Uh, John missed a pretty easy shot on his last to give him an easy deuce, so we're two up. And usually Mark Kennedy, John Morris make double peels out of their mind. Um, I mean, Kevin Martin won us. I can show you my trophy case here. 90% of them were won from Kevin, right? And so I don't have a lot of bad things to say about that guy, but that was – he lost us that one. That was just ridiculous. Uh, you know, wow. dumb, 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 dumb call, but – you know, hey, it, I don't, I don't, I mean, he won us so much that you, you can pass that one over. Bad time for that to happen in the world final, but I truly believe if we don't lose that 2009 world final, we we, we don't win the Olympic gold the next year. So, wow, it was a good, good, good kick in the butt, uh, motivating for us. I mean, we were kind of unstoppable at that time, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little high on our high on the horse. And so that was a good wake up call to, to get back to work and uh, for all mm -hmm. four of us. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, tit for tat, if that's if that's what has to happen, then it's okay. Yeah, wow. I, you know, I don't remember seeing that replay ever since the live show. So that's oh, a really? I mean, I watch it almost weekly and wonder what the really? heck is going on. Yeah, yeah but there was a similar know. call at the Salt Lake City Olympics too that Kevin made the threw away shot. But anyway. No, that one, that one wasn't a. I mean, that was just a missed shot. I mean, Kevin, his last shot, everyone thinks it was like super easy. It wasn't. He he just overthought it, and you know, pressure of the moment. We we're in a building of. Six, eight thousand in Moncton. We're the big favorite. We've haven't lost a game in like a long time, and that one stung. But mm. hey, I'm over it. It's it's okay. Good, good. So, what do you make so far of what's going on at the Worlds? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. I mean, I haven't got to see all the games. I've I've tuned into the games where Canada's played the top teams. You know, I'd love to see him play. I watched the first game against Moet. I watched the game against Nikki. Uh, I watched the game. I watched another game in there too somewhere. I haven't been able to see them all. We've been practicing, getting ready for our own stuff here. But uh, right. I mean, I would say interesting. I would say I would have. I would have. Uh, I mean, biggest surprise for sure would be Russia, mm. and I would say the biggest maybe disappointment would probably be um, Japan. I kind of thought they had a good run in 2019 and they looked really good there and they kind of maybe take a step back, but you know, I, I don't think there's really any surprises in the playoffs. So the only one I would say Russia in, and I thought maybe it was going to be Japan, Norway, or Italy. Uh, but this Russian team's obviously playing very well. And other than that, I mean, you got Schuster and, and Botcher and uh, Nikki and and Moet and who's oh and Swiss and and Benoit. So right now I think the real bond spiel starts. I think uh, now when you're going to start getting. I mean I can only speak from my experiences. I, I know I saw some noise like you guys were saying earlier that people were fussed about uh, them not making the playoffs or being nervous. Like I mean I've been to four worlds and two Olympics and I never got nervous before the playoffs. I mean I don't think uh, Canadian teams. I mean. I don't know, maybe because their first time there, they were a little bit antsy, but right. I was never nervous of them making the playoffs. You know, they're a good team. You know, they won the Briar in a really tough field. And so I was never under uh, any sort of inkling that that was going to happen. Uh, four losses. I mean, I think that could happen in that field. There's four, yeah. there's, there's five. I would say there's five really good teams there that could beat you. So four losses isn't unheard of. I, I would say I was more surprised of who they lost to to get those four losses. But right, uh, right. But four losses doesn't shock me, but four losses gets you in. So it's all good. Billy, well, it's the the said too, um, it was a 95% game that Korea played against them. So when that happens, 95%. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's throwing the rocks at the other end if they end up in the right spot. And so I did not see that game, you know, uh, so I, I don't really have a comment on it. But, yeah, that was a bit of a shock to me, obviously. And uh, I don't even know who else they lost to. Nicholas, I saw that game was a meltdown. They, should, they never should have lost that game. Well, they lost to Russia, yeah. Russia as well. I mean, all four of their losses were on the last rock of the game. Yeah, so, I didn't see that. I didn't see the Russia game. I saw the Nicholas game. They controlled that whole game. They shouldn't have lost that one. That was a tough one. And then I didn't see Korea or uh, Russia. But, I mean, now it's playoff time. Hmm. You know, if they were nervous about getting an Olympic spot, maybe that edge is gone for them now. I mean – if Canada didn't get an Olympic spot and we went to a spiel of eight B teams to try to finish top three, right. I ain't nervous. Like right. no, none of the Canadian teams are going to be nervous going to that. So I never thought that was a thing. I think the nerves now are we're here to win a world championship. You know, we want to win a, we want to win a gold medal. And that's kind of where I feel uh, in the situations that I've been in, that they're going to be. And that's when the nerves start coming in because now you're playing for the, for the podium. Uh, that's I was going to ask you that about the the mindset, Benny, of how you would you know Olympic birth and then winning a world championship. But let's move past that in our conversation leading into the Briar. I think you you talked about the fact that you know Canadians got to get used to the fact that we might not win gold every time we go to a bond spiel, and we're seeing the parody play out now. So can you give us some perspective for some people who have lost perspective this week, just on on where we're at? I mean, it's been a few years since Canada has been on top of the podium at an international event now. Yeah. I mean, I don't, uh, I said when we, you know, it was obviously disheartening when we, we lost the Olympic semi. Right. You know, that hurt. Uh, and then I've lost uh, two world finals. Right. You know, I'm lucky to win three golds as well. So a little bit only didn't end up on the podium once out of six. So that was a little lucky, but uh, I mean, it's changed a lot. The days that we went with Kevin Martin in 08, 09, we were never finishing anything but first or second right just like go roll them down the ice and that's where we were going to finish we were that good and the other teams weren't weren't where they are today right and i would say the swiss team today i mean pale lindholm's team was pretty awesome back in the day they were awesome from sweden but nicholas is either equal to him or or surpassed mm -hmm. i would say the scotland team today is as good as any scotland team maybe there's ever been uh with with dave murdoch and you mcdonald so the teams wow. that are coming up they're just as good as these reps that any any country thinks have ever have ever seen. And then obviously Schuster, he always seems to put up a good fight. You know, they're gritty. They maybe not be flashy or throw it that good, but you know, they make a lot of shots. And then obviously, I, I don't know much about the Russians. The last time we played the Russians, they were no good, and right. now they look awesome. So they've obviously put in a lot of work in. But 
Yeah, there, it ain't going to be Canada going to the Olympics on men and women and double golding it very often anymore, if mm -hmm. ever. I mean, it could happen, but – and you see it with the – I, I still think – I don't even know if Canada is the favorite this week. Mm -hmm. Real, re realistic. I mean, I would say between Botcher, Nicholas, and Moet – are all one, 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 and then I would put the Swiss and Schuster, maybe even the Swiss at two, and then Schuster behind them. But I, I mean, if Nicholas won or Moet won, I'm not mm. like, oh, what an upset! Like those are great teams. We play them week in, week out on the Grand Slams, and they're not there donating entry fees. They win on the Grand <laughs> Slams. Yeah. So I don't. Uh, that that's how I look at it. But I think Botcher has he's comfortable now. He's into the quarters. I don't know who has hammer tonight, but if he can control the game with this kind of the style he likes to play. I think if you leave him a draw to the forefoot for the win, I'm sure that's kind of what he's going to want and keep it close and, and try to control the brick is what Botcher's team needs to do. Awesome. And what do you make of the, this format with six teams and quarterfinals first with the play into the uh, semi, you know, semifinal? Yeah, I think I like it. I like the, uh, the how it preps you for the Olympic games, the sudden death semi. Mm -hmm. And I think four teams making the playoffs out of, is there 14 teams? Yeah, that's the first thing I would change. It's way too long of a round robin. That's that's ridiculous. I'd, I'd love to get it back to the twelve team round robin. Uh, Fourteen games. I mean, twelve games is a long haul uh, in a round robin with twelve teams. So fourteen's too long. Um, but I like the format. I think yeah. it it rewards if you're going to do a double semi, automatic elimination. I think it rewards the teams one and two, yeah. uh, yeah. similar to the page, uh, rather than going straight Olympic one, four, two, three. So no, I really do like the format and uh, gives you a couple extra games, which is good. Yeah. Okay, we got to get to predictions. Uh, so Canada, Scotland tonight, U.S., Switzerland tomorrow morning. We understand, Ben, that Canada, if they win tonight, will play in the semifinal. Uh, you know how it works. Lower seed will play Sweden. So th there are permutations that could play out. But tonight, let's start with tonight and then tomorrow morning. Canada, Scotland, USA, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Canada, Scotland, I'll say it is... One of the teams is going to be one up without coming home. Hmm. And I'll say whoever has the hammer in the last end wins. Nice. Okay. So that's telling us nothing right now, except you think it's going to be a real close game. So I just don't want to be proved wrong. And, you, and to be honest, I mean, it could go either way. They're both, they're yeah. both really, really good teams and I've beat them lots and lost to them lots. So I have no idea to be yeah. honest with you. And the other game at the start of the week, I would have taken Benoit because uh, you know him and his team, I found them to play very, very tough. When we played, when we played in the Worlds in '19, we had to beat Scotland in the quarters. We finished third, yeah, uh, due to a draw button thing or whatever, right? Or whatever yep. it was, right? Last shot draw. <laughs> yeah, so we got third. Um, so we had to play Scotland in the quarter and then Swiss in the semi. Those were the two best games maybe I've ever been involved in my whole life. Both teams were 90s up and down the lineup. We squeaked two wins, two really – and we had to play excellent to beat them both. And ever since that moment, I knew, you know, Benoit's team, they, they're trending in a good direction. I like – he has all the shots. But they haven't looked very good. So I'm taking Schuster Cakes. Wow. I'm taking Schuster. Wow. I just – I don't even know why. I just uh, – I would have taken at the start of the week – I actually bet on Benoit to, win, to do well and, and and win. So, but I'm not I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So I'm taking Schuster. Hmm. And if that were the case, of course, and Canada were to win tonight, they would play Sweden in the afternoon, and then USA would play uh, the Russians tomorrow night. That's how that would play. Okay. Out. Yeah, I don't know how that plays out. I mean, either way, I mean, I know I was a curler, and if I'm on Botcher's team, who I want to play in the semi, because. You know, if you go and play good, if you play, if Botcher plays his best game against Russia, I know Russia's blacking out right now and they're playing amazing. Botcher wins. Right. And if Botcher goes and plays his very best game against Nicholas and Nicholas plays his best game, he doesn't for sure win. Wow. Because mm. Nicholas and Oscar are filthy players. They're very, very good. So, <laughs> filthy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, you could go, there's very few teams in the world that you can say, the top three, four teams from Canada could go play their very best and lose to, but Nicholas is one of them. So I know who I'd want to play, but uh, hey, you got to roll the dice and see. I got, I got a big game tonight to get by first. Uh, Moet, uh, they're very, very tough. Hmm. Good. Interesting. Yeah. Right. Good. I'm, I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna watch tonight. I'm. 
I'm going to barbecue some chicken and pour a nice uh, glass of red, and I might even finish the whole bottle. We'll see. I'm in quarantine. So I'll go back. <laughs> You're down in the dungeon. Yeah. I'm in awesome. the dungeon. You bet. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, get ready to be back into the pandemic bubble. I'm looking forward to getting back out there. You bet. Good job, guys. We'll uh, enjoy the game, and we'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Okay, see you guys. Take care. Awesome. awesome. Uh, gives it to us straight and says some swears. Sometimes. You know, I didn't have it ready. I mean, it was back there, but I well, was way for, too late. For the, record, for the record, you and Ben are the only two to swear on the show live. I wouldn't say what I said. No, you swore, Colleen. It was barely a swear. Oh, it was a swear. <laughs> Friday night house party is we're an hour away from Canada, Scotland at the Men's World Curling Championship. We're going in the house with a couple of my friends, Colleen. Nice. And here they are, Kath and Gail. Awesome to see you. It's been too long. Great to see both of you. How are you? Where are you? Are you ready to rock tonight? Yeah, we're totally ready to rock. I'm in Kelowna. We're good. We're, you know, just getting ready for the big game, watching all week, the ups and the downs. We're ready to go. May I say, Kathy, your plants look fabulous. I mean, I think <laughs> Devin probably has plant envy. I do. And for both Kathy and Gail, your Canadian flags are strategically put there. And is that a scarf you're wearing too, Gail? It is. I felt like it was oh fitting accessory for for this. Definitely. Well yeah. done. Awesome. So Gail, what do you make so far of the uh, world championships? Has there been some nervous moments for you? Yeah, I haven't been able to take in as much as I wanted to of it on television just because of work commitments. But uh, Kathy and I always end up texting through parts of the game. Um, so yeah, it's just it's been it's been good. And um, tonight should be an exciting game for sure. Now, you two are both great curling fans. I think we have a photo of having the opportunity to meet when we were able to be out there in the world. Look at us. Uh, of course, that's in Las Vegas. We had and we had a bit of fun, didn't we, um, at the Men's World Curling Championship. And you guys are Gushu fans, of course, but always Canada fans first. Kathy, uh, you've seen the, the discourse on Twitter this week. Um, it can get pretty dicey when Canada isn't dominating. What do you make of the conversation around Canadian curling when it's good and when it's not so good? Good question. I, I mean, everyone's so passionate and so excited. And I think we're so used to having an amazing representative from Canada. And, and these guys are, are amazing in what they're doing. And I think that passion just flips on its head when there's a stumble or there's a, you know, trip up and Twitter's rough, right? I mean, it's wonderful. It creates a lot of community, but good grief. It can get nasty sometimes. So we keep it positive and, and most people are pretty good. So hopefully mm. we can all support them tonight and, and get a good outcome. Yeah. And, and Gail, what do you make of it? Great to see. I'm happy to see you both. It's like, I miss you guys, <laughs> but, but Gail, what do you make of it? Um, you know, because we, you, the three of us have had a lot of conversations about this, uh, wh whether it was in Vegas or uh, in Conception Bay South, Gail. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, I think kind of echo what Kathy said. I mean, I think Twitter is great for the community that it brings to the game. Um, but, you know, people are quite quick to to re remove their backing against a team, you know, when things start to slide. <laughs> No pun intended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's always been bandwagon jumper offers, you know, and um, it's the, the criticism can sting for sure. And it's just always been there. I was in uh, involved with the, uh, it, when it was snail mail, people would literally mail you stuff. And then it used to be that on websites, it would just be this constant thread of negativity if you started to go south. So, I don't know that a lot of people really understand how hard it is and that the difference between winning and losing can sometimes be just that much. And 
And yeah. especially this year, right? To take some perspective. I mean, we're so lucky to be able to watch these athletes compete and to root for them and to have something to watch. Like, it's just amazing what they've accomplished with the bubble. So I think we keep that in perspective and we'll all be pretty good to watch. Well, and actually, Kathy and Gail is regular, you know, I'm sure maybe the world in Las Vegas wasn't your first event, but I would imagine the curling in a pandemic bubble as great as it is and everybody's putting themselves out there for it uh you would miss the noise you would miss the applause you would mm -hmm. miss talking to fans the hugs fans give you to say hey you're going to be all right you know you got your next one um that gives you a lot of mojo as a curler so mm -hmm. for a lot of the curlers now going through this uh without the fans like you two probably pretty difficult yeah yeah okay What's going to happen tonight? Gail, Gail, <laughs> we're going to be watching. Everybody's going to be, you know, nerves are going to be rubbed raw tonight. But uh, what do you what do you think is uh, going to happen, Gail? I mean, I'm going to predict a Canada win. I feel like. Shocker. <laughs> Kath? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. I remember in Vegas when uh, Kyushu played Moet in the semis and they had a really – Amazing game, good shots. Uh, obviously, Gushi came out on top in that one. So I'm expecting more of the same. I'm excited. I think it's going to be really good curling. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, and I do remember that. My goodness, that was, that was a turbulent week in Vegas for the boys as well. They had a lot going on in their personal lives. But uh, I hope you guys are both taking uh, care of yourself and, and are staying safe and healthy. And it's so good to see both of you. Can't wait to see you again. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, okay. enjoy tonight's game. We'll see you on Twitter in, a, in about half hour from now. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Awesome set design from both of them. And those plants, they're thriving. We haven't heard a thing about your plants or scarves. Probably but because of there's one plant that I'm struggling with in the house. Oh, yeah. You haven't killed it yet, though. Well, it's close. Okay. <laughs> you wonder why you're not hearing about the plants. Oh, dear. Well, that's the it was wonderful in plant land and lockdown in Ontario. Um, anyway, we are going to Mike Harris, who is in the bubble in Calgary, in the hotel. He's been, look it, he's ready to go. I'm ready. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good. Uh, Kevin and I were doing the uh, the afternoon draws uh, earlier. Was so listening. Kevin Martin, and uh, there he is. And uh, so, if you look over, I think my my left shoulder. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a gray door. That is where uh, Kevin is. He's a he's where we have adjoining rooms here in the bubble, which is uh, a little scary. Oh. Uh, there he is. So uh, you can see to my right, we've got. Uh, Little Calgary Tower on the wall, and then uh, oh, our, our door. Nice. There he is. The left adjoining. We have adjoining rooms, and once we got through our quarantine, uh, we've we've been able to uh, lament yeah. and uh, celebrate some of uh, Team Botcher's victories and a couple of tough ones, uh, as as you were just uh, speaking about. Yeah. Well, to that point, I mean, obviously, Karik is playing on the team, and so how's Kevin feel? Have you talked about their performance? <laughs> I mean, oh right? sure, every night, every yeah. night we talk about it. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's like many of the teams here. I think uh, inconsistency seems to be the the uh, the word of the week, and uh, no one coming in here with any momentum, of course, no one's hard, no one's played at all. Uh, so it was a little bit of a a, a guess as to who was going to do well. Um, Nicholas Adine early in the week not playing mm -hmm. his best, and now he's just a little scary <laughs> as he typically is to these events. And, and, uh, you know, there was, a, I, I think the, uh, the panic button was being hit by many people across the country about team botcher. Um, and really they've been pretty good most of the week. Uh, you know, maybe the exception of that performance against uh, Korea, that's, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta beat the teams you're supposed to be. And if that, if they'd won that game, none of the late week drama would even have been an issue really. So if you think of it that way, and then, of course, we have the team, uh, team RCF, as a, who was a huge surprise to many of us, including me. Um, yeah, maybe that, a playoff team. Are They're, they that good, Mike? Are they that good? Uh, the skip is that good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Glukov has uh, been pretty impressive, man, I tell you. 
Um, he's the MVP of the week for as far as I'm concerned right now. But, you know, playoffs are a different, uh, different kettle of fish. And, um, you know, a team like Botcher, he's won a lot of big games over the last few years. And he's been in a, in a ton of sudden death uh, matches. And, uh, yeah, I, I like their chances. Scotland's playing well, though. I mean, they're, they're going to have their hands full with, uh, with a young Bruce Mowat. Yeah. What about De Cruz? I mean, is he rising from the ashes where, you know, look like <laughs> ooh, they weren't even going to. Yeah. They're yeah. there. You know, it's funny. We did, we were doing the morning draw as well. And, and uh, at the time, Norway was up five, two on yeah. Scotland. So our, our feature game, which was uh, we were featuring uh, the Swiss team and they had won their game, but they looked over and Norway was up five, two. It looked like they're going to miss the playoffs. So when we did the interview, they're saying, oh, yeah, we've had a good week, but we'd like a couple, you know, a couple shots back here and there. So I think they're just playing on borrowed money at the time. So they're, they're going to look at it going, well, you know, <laughs> 20 minutes ago, we were out of this thing. And now all of a sudden we're in. So um, there I think they're going to have the certain freedom. I think it was certainly a feeling of freedom going into the quarterfinal matchup. Um, they play uh, they'll play USA tomorrow morning. Um, so. They have a they have a day to rest and get ready and and uh, the Scott no there's no uh, difficulty for Team Scotland to find motivation to play well against Team Canada and um, you know just for for Botcher um, I still think the fact that it's in their own hands is a good thing um, they're the higher seeded team so we'll have to see whether that gets them rocks they have a, I think they have the same record so I'm not sure um, if that's going to benefit them in that way but. Head to head. At the end of the at the end of the day, they they got through. Um, Darren has shaved his beard, so the mojo's gone, right? So that's Ready sometimes that's not, there we go. Sometimes that's all it, that's all it takes. Look at, I mean, you talk about superstition. He said he blamed <laughs> the beard. If if only it was that easy. And the funny thing about that is normally it's it's the reverse. You grow a playoff beard, <laughs> right, um, Mike? You, you've been there, you've been watching all of this, you've been calling the games for fans who are going to be tuning in tonight. What should we be paying attention to early in the game to give us a signal as to, you know, where these teams are at and where they're, you know, how they're firing early in the game? The, the one thing I will say is Scotland is, has been more consistent than Team Canada throughout the week. So mm -hmm. I think if Canada comes out and plays the way they're capable of playing, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in their own, like I said, it's in their own hands, which is a good thing. But Scotland just isn't going to go away, you know, regardless mm -hmm. of what the score ends up being. And um, even today, the, the game, they really didn't have any reason to win their game earlier today. They're down 5-2, playing the eighth end against a team. If, if they let, if Norway wins that game, they wouldn't actually have to play Canada. In the, in, they would end up playing the United States wow. in, the, uh, in the quarterfinal game. And they just had an opportunity uh you know unusual miss from uh actually torgren ergard missed a shot late in the eighth and gave him an opportunity they end up getting four and, and taking control of that game so they're they're just super focused on on uh, the task at hand they don't care who they're playing they don't care if it's us or scotland or switzerland or whomever else so they're going to be very very tough um and i i know botcher knows that there's nothing there's no surprises coming uh, down the pipe for either team uh, yeah. I think getting ahead early, if uh, Canada has the hammer, if they can score two out of the gate, that will really be uh, be helpful for them. Mm. If uh, Scotland has the hammer, then they, they try to just hold them to one and, and move forward. But it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a good match. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's there's not much to choose between these two teams. You know, Bruce Mowat is, you know, one of the top five teams in the world. Wow. So good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a battle. It's going to be a battle. Good luck. Well, Brandon Botcher is the number one ranked team in the world, right? So that, there, there's that as well. So you've got, you've got. Uh, I said the cream has definitely risen to the top, yeah, this week, uh, yeah. with that one little surprise in the in the mix with uh, with RCF. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> hey, I, I keep it real. You know, you guys know me very well. I, I'm not about to sugarcoat a whole lot. It's, <laughs> Team Botcher is going to have to be good if they want to move yeah. on tonight. Yeah, yeah well, and, and but, that, but they're 100 percent capable, and I have no doubt that they will bring in their best, and uh, and I like their chances. Yeah. yeah.
Well, go uh, knock on the bear bear's door now. Listen, I, I have to say, I got to look what I brought with me, uh, Colleen. Nova Scotia Sports Hall of Fame, nice. little mug, a gift from our our friend Bruce Rainey. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I brought a little Nova Scotia with me to to Calgary. So that's got to be good luck for Team Botcher, wouldn't you say? Well, except that. Nova Scotia means New Scotland in. Um, <laughs> so, We're just trying to find ways around this. We're just trying to find ways around uh, this. I'm really uh, looking forward to the game. Uh, Kevin and I are going to be tuning in, and uh, I'll post, uh, you know, mental health updates and blood pressure blood, blood pressure reports every uh, right, end right. or well, two. Now, listen, I mean, I mean, Kevin Martin, he'd, he'd be hard maybe to have. As, he'd be the maybe the worst curling dad to have. I'm not sure, or is he the best? Or the best, or the best. He's got yeah. a great perspective on things. You know, I've really, I feel really enjoyed working with Kevin over the last few years for a number of reasons. But mm -hmm. he says that uh, Shauna, his wife, is the one who's the basket case to watching, watching the sport. So Shauna, of course, is in Edmonton. She's not here uh, with us in the bubble. But uh, you know, it's been uh, we, we're, we're looking forward to watching the game. Um, fingers crossed. We, you know, as as the broadcasters, we we try not to be homers and try to cheer for a t one team or the other. And to be honest, like I coach, I coach Hammy McMillan, uh, the lead from Bruce Mowat's team, and and those boys, and they're very, they're just, they're just nice guys, yep. all around, and I enjoy them very much. Same with the Dean and the Cruz. We know all these, we all know these athletes so well after getting to know them for so many years on the on the Grand Slam circuit. So, uh, you know, you're you're cheering against friends and for friends, depending on who you're who you're with. So, um, we've got we've got five great, six great teams in the playoffs, and. Uh, you know, as a Canadian, I'm hopeful that Brendan and uh, and uh, the beardless Darren Molding and front end will will do well. So uh, we're looking forward to a good matchup tonight. Yeah, well, we are we are fans of the slams on this show, Mike, and we're gonna be yeah. looking, we'll be looking forward to your commentary because how long are you there for? Well, Kevin and I have been working with the World Curling Federation doing their, their streams. So any non-Canadian game people can watch, can go onto YouTube and pick up uh, the games. The, the Canadian games are geo-blocked, of course. But uh, So we're, I'm here for the men's world and then the slams, two slams, and then the women's world. So I, I, I get to come home on May 10th. So well, nothing 42 is, days in the bubble. Nothing's happening here, Mike. Nothing yeah. is well, I've heard that, which is good. So my my the, my home golf course is opening on Wednesday, but the weather really doesn't get, get good till May first anyway. So, what else am I doing? I, I, I'm happy to be working and uh, and bringing curling to people yeah. who are in the in the stay at home order, right? Yes, awesome, stay awesome. Okay, home. lovely to see both of you. Good to, good see, good you. to see you. Have so Enjoy much the game. fun. <laughs> yes, you too. We'll see you on Twitter, Mike. Okay, cheers. Okay, awesome. We consider watching curling like an aerobic workout. I mean, the stress level just gets the heart rate up, right? You're well, you know, I tweeted this the other day, but I mean, I hate the fact, I mean, he, it's late for you in Nova Scotia. It's <laughs> late out east here. And then it's what, midnight, 1 a.m. where you are, Call Your heart is racing. Mm -hmm. I know that you have to settle down and get to bed. And you were up waiting to find out, you know, the other night, did Canada earn their spot? It took a little while to even clarify that. Well, how do I mean, there were 256 scenarios. You were sleeping. The whiteboards were put away. And I'm wondering where the hell you were. Yeah, 256 scenarios were too much. <laughs> let's talk about, we've got the white yes. source up. So let's talk a little bit about tonight, Canada versus Scotland, and then tomorrow, right. the United States and Switzerland. So we know Sweden, number one. Number two is RCF. So let's, you describe, all right, go ahead. Okay, so here we go. So let's play a hypothetical. If Canada were to win tonight yeah. and the USA were to win tomorrow morning, right. it would be Canada versus Sweden okay. in the afternoon. And it would be the United States versus the Russian Curling Federation okay. tomorrow evening. Okay, but... Uh, but if Canada were to win, <laughs> why are all these hypotheticals with Canada winning? If Canada were to win tonight and Switzerland were oh. to win the United States tomorrow, okay. Canada would play RCF wow. tomorrow afternoon. Okay. And Switzerland would play Sweden tomorrow night. Here's the oh. here's the thing. Uh, the winner of Canada versus Scotland will play 
tomorrow afternoon. They're not going to make the United States or Switzerland play back to back call. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so right. the so winner, the winner of, of this game is playing first. Or to make it a little simpler, the lower seed out of all of that from the quarterfinals mm -hmm. will play the higher seed, which is Sweden. Right. And then the next team will play the Russian Curling Federation. So I would say if you're a Canadian curling fan, you want to beat Scotland tonight. Yeah. And you want Switzerland to beat the United States in the morning. And then it would be Canada versus the Russian Curling Federation. Do you got that? I got it. But <laughs> so, and then the, the, ch the champion eventually <laughs> comes over here. World <laughs> champion. Like, I feel like we're still a long way, aren't we, from... from and, and listen, this Men's World Curling Ooh. Championship has been a journey. Yes. Um, and obviously, we've missed the curling fans every single night, but we are back. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be back tomorrow night, and perhaps we'll be talking about a Canadian mm -hmm. semifinal victory. We will be. Oh, you know that's the thing. Well, fingers. I, are I mean, there are there are yes. potentially there are potentially two Canadian curling games mm -hmm. from now. Tonight or they're out. Right, they're and like you said, if they lose tonight, it's the first time since 1976 they're not playing in a semifinal at yeah. the Men's World Curling Championship. Which yeah, is and I think I think between Ben Hebert and also. Um, Mike is just summing up, uh, Scotland's a great team. So, by the way, uh, Great Britain uh, played paid some tribute to the loss of uh, Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yeah. Passed away. There uh, it is. This lovely uh, tweet offering the deepest condolences. So, yeah, he's. Uh, we, we were recapping today. There are many visits here to Nova Scotia and across Canada. And if there's one thing about uh, Prince Philip, he adored Canada and all the wilderness. And who among us, I don't know, you might be too young, Devin, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, were those still a thing? Are they still a thing? But for me in grade five, no, they weren't. You didn't have Duke of Edinburgh? Okay, so you had to actually, in your gym class, compete in like a, a run, you had to climb the rope, you had to see how many push-ups you could do, really. Really, I'm what is even happening? We have to end the show, Colleen. Okay, we are ending the show. Anyhow, but do you have the rock? Do you have the rock there? I think you should do some. Yeah, I, I didn't want to tell you that I put my back out the last time, but I do. I think that was in the awards too. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is he influenced a generation to love fit. Can I ask you, is that rock from uh, Elsie Craig? This is from Scotland. Yeah. Mm. So I got it back on my luggage from Scotland, my carry-on, back when they didn't care how much stuff. This is absurd. I mean, it's back when they could fly. Okay. I'm expecting a prolific performance tonight from the Canadians. That's a good one. Prolific performance. Because you know what? Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. I like to call it the seven C's of curling. Or was that six? But I should add prolific to that. Okay, so we're gonna do it again tomorrow. We are 37 minutes away from Canada and Scotland. We're going to be back tomorrow. There could be two Canadian wins the next time we talk to you. Buckle up. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. On Twitter. Thanks, Soph. Thanks, Sophie. See you tomorrow.